Mr. Vice Speaker, delegates, friends, colleagues, our outstanding affiliate leaders, students, residents, fellows, and our amazing AOA staff. Welcome everyone to the 101st AOA House of Delegates Annual Meeting. I'm really excited to bring this AOA update to you. And the first thing I'd like to talk is about our leadership in the organization. It has been such an outstanding experience to serve with and alongside President Ely. He's an amazing friend, he's an amazing colleague, and he's an outstanding, outstanding leader. You know, Dr. Ely has lamented several times during this year that he's been a virtual president. Well, I will tell you, my friend, my colleague, you've been anything but virtual. You've had the presence of any in-person president that the AOA has ever experienced. Thank you for your service. And I've really enjoyed my time with you. The Board of Trustees, thank you for your steadfast support during difficult times and all that we've been able to work on together. I enjoy working with each and every one of you and absolutely want the entire House of Delegates to know how hardworking you are and how expert you are at the work that you do on behalf of the osteopathic profession. Dr. Jaimo, I'm inspired by your passion and look forward to your leadership and to work more closely with you this upcoming year. You know, we're a proud association in service of a very proud profession and our pride is rooted in our distinctive philosophy. So how are we distinctive this year? The three overarching goals chosen by President Ely and shared by the entire organization were expand the osteopathic community, support the future of the profession and enhance the AOA's public health mission. And I do believe collectively between the board of trustees, the staff and the members of the bureaus, councils and committees and many others, we executed on those goals expertly. We created eight subordinate goals, 74 operational goals and an additional 59 value added projects that we believe help to advance the osteopathic profession. And we believe that we help to actualize President Ely's vision. You know, the AOA is as strong and vibrant an organization as it ever has been. At the close of the fiscal year, fiscal year 21, we are reporting a net operating income surplus of $4.2 million. We reduced expense where it was not necessary. Some expense was reduced because we couldn't do certain things during the pandemic. We enhanced existing revenue streams and created some new ones. And what we do with that surplus is enhance service to our members and create new programs. And we're very excited about how we're putting those resources to work for all of you. Membership is very strong in doing well. We have exceeded our membership projections for two years running, and we believe we're gonna have another excellent year this year. But we recognize that one size doesn't fit all. In the past, that's the way that the AOA has approached it. We recently launched our resident and fellow campaign and we launched it after we created the value proposition. Residents and fellows have different needs and need different resources than others. So we created those resources and made them available for residents and fellows. We've also created a new value proposition for students. It's almost completed. And we do wanna make sure that even though student membership is free, we wanna make sure that the students realize we've created unique resources for them and create greater awareness about this free membership offering and work with the colleges of osteopathic medicine to get them all enrolled. We've enhanced many resources. In particular, our CME resources. The track me portal is much improved. We have a new submission process for CME credits, which is much easier to use. Through the collaborative work with our outstanding affiliate leaders and board of trustees and others, we are enhancing the osteopathic distinctiveness of AOA CME. Our AOA research database is a great member benefit with over 9,000 articles that are accessible through it so that any member can search any research article about the osteopathic profession. OMED 2020 with nearly 4,000 registrants was a great success. And we're building on that success for OMED 2021 in Phoenix. It'll be a hybrid model in person, that not to miss community event. And also there'll be a virtual component. Our tagline, because we haven't been together for so long and we're very excited to see one another, is a homecoming, experience the distinction. And an un 
unprecedented 17 specialty colleges will be participating this year. We're very excited to have all of them included. The DO, I'm sure you're familiar with the DO, and largely it has been externally facing, which included some content for the osteopathic community, but largely focused on content for the healthcare consumer and patients. We are creating a new internally facing DO that will be written by DOs and osteopathic medical students for DOs and osteopathic medical students. It is set to launch in the upcoming months. We have a new podcast platform that's taken us a while to build and we have three outstanding hosts and we will create new resources and launch new content through that platform in the upcoming month or two. And our membership app that we've been reporting for quite some time is almost signed, sealed, and delivered. It is signed and sealed, and we're working on the delivery. That app will launch as a digital community for the osteopathic profession at OMED 2021. We're still very focused on advocacy, payer advocacy through AOIA, of course, legislative advocacy with our Washington, D.C. office, and we've doubled down on professional advocacy. I do want to comment about legislative advocacy with respect to DO Day. This past year, we started a new format, making it an osteopathic community event, building on the great event it used to be, predominantly hosting medical students. Over 850 were registered this year, and over 400 from more than 40 states attended over 250 congressional meetings. Professional advocacy is really important to us. As I mentioned to you at the special meeting of the House of Delegates last October, if the AOA cannot advocate loudly for the osteopathic profession, the osteopathic physician and medical student, then we lack purpose. Well, I submit to you again, we don't lack purpose and we will use our resources to advocate loudly for our osteopathic profession. And in recent months, there have been several advances in that regard. I think you all recall um, the way that we all stood proudly together against the attacks on Sean P. Conley, but in particular, our DO credentials. The Figsware um, issue has come full circle at this point. In conversations with them, we've made a lot of progress, including the suggestion that if there were ads that were placed that were negative, where are the ads that would be positive, not just neutral? Out of those discussions came a prime time ad on many networks that hosted um, Dr. Julia Yafrati, a sports medicine doc and dancer, who is a DO trained in physical medicine and rehab. It is, was a very, very positive commercial for the osteopathic profession, funded by Figsware. The ABIM lawsuit is progressing along and we don't know what the outcome will be, but we believe it is very important to advocate in this regard for program directors who are AOA certified to make sure that they can still provide the great graduate medical education they have for many years and continue to do so in the roles that they have and not be restricted in doing so by an outside organization. Committing the resources, time and energy of the AOA to these types of events are exactly what we're here for. Medical student advocacy is critically important to many organizations in the osteopathic community, but it absolutely is foundationally important to us. We know that osteopathic medical students are frequently under additional duress, particularly during the pandemic. And it's become very clear that they don't have an equal access to audition, away, or clinical rotations. And we've identified where those areas are and what programs or institutions are providing those obstacles or creating those barriers. Just to give you a sense of a few recent updates and a few recent successes, Johns Hopkins no longer has its $5,000 application fee for osteopathic medical students. The University of Southern Alabama has removed its statements that it would not accept applicants from a COCA accredited medical school. Albert Einstein College of Medicine, they're now allowing osteopathic medical students to apply and rotate at their institution. University of New Mexico has joined the ranks recently and previously the Hospital for Special Surgery after a very strategically worded conversation changed their website within three hours to make sure that they recognized the single GME accreditation system and the place and the purpose that DOs have 
in the healthcare community and the purpose and value of training osteopathic physicians and also osteopathic medical students. Now, so how loud is your advocacy voice? Well, we tabulated this for fiscal year 21. Over 13 million impressions, over 473,000 engagements, 105,000 click-throughs, meaning those people wanted to see the resources that we were reporting were important on these very topics. We are making progress and the resources, the platform and the voice and the strength and energy of the American Osteopathic Association are coming to bear on this topic. We're also advocating for osteopathic research through the new journal, the Journal of Osteopathic Medicine. The editorial process has improved. The number of submissions has increased. The quality of those submissions is increased as well. And we think the quality of the journal is, is markedly improved. We're also starting to note that we're creating an impact factor, meaning that the journal is becoming more relevant. More people are looking at the content. Certifying board services, we promised that we would make up for lost time and make up for lost opportunity. And I think that we're making good on that promise. The single and solitary goal of certifying board services at this time is to preserve osteopathic or AOA certification for any DO who wants it in any specialty or subspecialty that we can provide it in. That's it. There is no profit motive. This is important to the osteopathic community and it's critically important as a service for the AOA to provide. And we're excited about the advancements that we have made recently. The ambassador program is doing well. AOA certified physicians communicating with program directors about the value of the pathway for DOs as the primary, if not the sole certification pathway once they complete residency training. The innovation that we've recently created through remote proctored platforms is almost nearly completed. Almost every examination we provide at this time is on a remote proctored platform in response to what the candidates were saying they wanted. User experience is important, and we want to make sure that we're capturing the, the interests of those graduating residents, our new candidates. And our relationship with the MBOME is going very well. As a matter of fact, we launched on July 1st, the first longitudinal assessment set of modules for AOBFP, and we're very excited. AOBNP will launch in October, and early information is that it's gone well, and the feedback we've received is that people are very pleased. Thank you, MBOME. Thank you, Dr. Gimple. And of course, thank you to our staff. You know, we've developed a branding campaign specifically for certifying board services, which is almost ready to launch. And it's emphasizing our 80 years of excellence in competency assessment for board certification in the osteopathic community. We should be proud. And we're gonna claim the space that we rightfully own. And we wanna make sure that the people stay in our community and we've created these resources for them. The overall branding campaign is moving forward very quickly as well. And we absolutely wanna make sure we're telling our story better, not just creating awareness of the osteopathic profession, but creating an understanding of who we are and the value we bring to the bedside and to the healthcare system. As a matter of fact, Recently, in a meeting with 2 by 4 our marketing and advertising firm, I asked them not to use stock photos or models because the osteopathic profession, osteopathic physicians and medical students are the only ones qualified to tell our story. So our team, along with 2 by 4 recently had a photo and video shoot, and our people were the subjects in those videos and those photos, and you'll see those faces in upcoming collaterals. And I will tell you that I hope you're as excited as I am about our new tagline, the American Osteopathic Association, modern medicine for your body, mind, and spirit. We recently drafted and the Board of Trustees approved a specific strategic plan for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this is to ensure that the AOA reflects the diversity in our osteopathic community and the patients that you care for. We are committed to these principles. I'll leave you with some final comments. Selfless servant leadership with unyielding advocacy for you and our profession, that is what you should expect from the American Osteopathic Association.
If we fail to serve you, we fail, period. No qualification. Thank you for your commitment, service, and efforts toward the advancement of the osteopathic profession and for perpetuating our distinctive philosophy. But most importantly, thank you for the opportunity to serve you in this role and for your support and, of course, for your membership. Our solidarity in mission and message will change the landscape of our nation's healthcare system. Let's change the world osteopathically. Thank you.